Okay, so I messed up and I used the wrong banner when I did my summons here. So I finally get to do my pity summon for this banner. I, I actually did this one first, so we're gonna warp. We're gonna hope for Clara or Himiko. Let's see if I can find like I saw a rainbow on the side. I'm trying to still I'm still trying to figure out how you can know before it hits gold here. Wow, gold does exist in the game. I mean, pawn runs out that way. It's funny. Can we get two? Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we at least got another we got a four star. The buffer. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Can't be mad. It's a five star finally. What is up, nerds? Cloud here with another Honkai Star Rail video. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Branya. She is the five star that I got from the beginner summon banner. Going to go over the sets that I'm using, my initial thoughts about her, and if you should re roll for her. Lego! <laughs> To guard and defend. Crush them! So, when I got Branya on the initial banner, I was a little bit disappointed because I wanted a damage dealer or I wanted a tank or a healer. However, Branya was a pleasant welcome to the crowd. I didn't have a healer when I first got her, so it just felt like I was missing something. And Natasha filled that void when I could start healing a bit more. However, I did notice a slight damage gap when I took Branya from my team. Specifically with like weakness fights where I could plan ahead and I knew a boss had a weakness against a certain element. Big spoiler though, I don't think she's a character that you necessarily need to re-roll for. However, I don't think that she's a character that you should be bummed out that you got. She serves her purpose in terms of being a support character and she could do a little bit of damage here, but the intent of her is to help the team out with their damage, to remove a debuff, and to combat rating in his characters forward so getting straight into the skills first thing um the skill that she has in battle is her most important her bread and butter it dispels the debuff from a single ally and it advances forward their actions by a hundred percent and increases their damage by 43 percent for one turn so this is what she is meant for to take away debuff to bring up a character who is below the boss or enemy and then to increase their damage so the picture perfect scenario is she is either top speed or even low speed, but she's top speed. She's about to go before the boss goes. Herda, the MC as physical, Sila, one of them just went, used their skill, and you have two skills left. You utilize this skill, bring them back forward in front of the boss, and then they do a damage again. Whether that's another skill or whether that's to build meter. You can also use this when you're looking at Natasha or a healer, for example. If I'm hurting and I need Natasha to reheal the team or to maybe gain some meter for her ult, I'll bring her back up. Though she gets the damage buff, I could take away the debuff and I get her 100% all the way up. So you're essentially getting another turn for a character that can break the boss's toughness or to do that final damage or to build their meter to let, to let them do another ult. That's what she's used for. Uh, this has been a blessing for content, both mid game and end game. Um, I have replaced her since uh, I'm using Sela now. However, I think that Branya will fit back on the team down the road. Um, her basic attack, once you unlock one of her uh, traces, she gets a 100% crit rate. So every time she normal attacks, she always crit damages the boss or the enemy. So that's cool. I don't really think you want to build her jack of all trades. I think you want to build her either speed or energy recharge. But it's still nice that it's guaranteed crit damage for an enemy. Um, her talent, which is her passive. So anytime she uses her basic attack... Uh, her, she will advance forward by 18%. Again, everything I'm labeling right now is the level that I have it in her traces. These are not the max level. Uh, however, they just provide a baseline. 
using her single attack, if you have no skill, at least she gives you the opportunity to get her up to 20%, I'm sure, at the max level. Maybe even above. Her technique, uh, so right before she gets into battle, she slams the ground, gets everyone super hype. She gives everyone a two-turn attack for 15%. So... When I was playing the game and I was using the MC to heal, and then I would use Herda to buff damage, it's like, oh man, I wish I could buff everyone, and now I can. So the pre-game before getting into the fight, Bronya is a character that you always want to use her technique with. Another part where she shines is her ultimate. Uh, her It increases the attack of all allies by 40%, and increases their crit damage equal to 12% of Bronya's crit damage, plus 30% for two turns. It's a lot of math that I cannot figure out, but the more crit damage that Branya has after activating her ult, the more crit damage the rest of her team is going to get. Again, it's that weird build where like you want to build her for speed, but if you get her uh, to get some off pulls or off percentages of crit damage, it's not the worst thing in the world. Even some of her traces have it, and that's just... You can't look at it like, oh, she's going to be a damage dealer, which she can with her single attack. But you got to look at it like, okay, every crit damage I add gives everyone on my team more damage. I've worked around this a little bit, not too, too much, because I can simply cannot have uh, enough uh, currency to farm. But I have seen a difference in damage when I build her on a crit damage set. But I really want her to be speed, and I really want to pop off my ultimate more, so I kind of go for a different route with the relics. Her light cone, uh, the battle pass, I think is the best one that I've seen so far, at least from a, like a free-to-play option. However, this is the one that I've used the entire game. Um, after entering battle, increases the attack of allies by 12%. This is one of the ones you're going to see every two and a half seconds when you summon. Easily effective, gives everyone more attack up. Again, she's a support unit. It doesn't really help her stats a lot, but it buffs the team. Um... I don't want to go into what I could have uh, could have used. Uh, her traces, uh, something that you're going to... If you're coming from Genshin Impact or you're coming from another game that talks about leveling up abilities, this is what it is. I haven't been able to hit those Ascension 6s to use the, the currency to see, like, these are few and far between. Again, this is the final CBT. Not sure if they're going to not give us as much as these. And we can you can trade in items to get these. But in any case... Uh, this is where you get her 100% crit rate from. Again, really niche, but super cool. Uh, this is the next ability that I'm excited to unlock. At the beginning of battle, increases all allies' defense by 20% for two turns. So if you get ambushed or you're fighting a boss that's just super fast, Branya gives that stat boost for defense, and I think that's incredible. On top of attack before you get into battle. Her traces are weird, though. Like, there's wind damage that you can level up. There's crit damage, which, again, benefits everyone. There's more wind damage. There's crit damage. So, like, she benefits the team. And then, like, the wind damage one's kind of weird. The effective resistance is kind of weird. Like, she's not a tank. But she, they certainly give her enough wind damage. Um, again, traces. The, the CBT, it's why not level them up? I just haven't grinded for them yet. But raising it up 1% doesn't seem like the greatest thing. But it's like, why not do it? The relics that I'm currently using, this is just a like trial period. I'm using the Eagle of Twilight line. It increases the wind damage, which is uh, what I'm not using her for. Or it for. Uh, after the wear uses the ultimate, their actions advance forward by 25%. So after I use my ult, my turn's over. And then I jump up 25%. That's a whole quarter based on the speed of what's going on with everyone else. Um, the Fleet of the Ageless is what I'm currently going to use for Branya if I pull for her. It increases the wearer's max HP by 12%, and then the wearer's speed reaches 120 or higher. All allies increase, all allies attack increases by 8%. And if I go to my stats, I just hit 120, which has been pretty hard, at least for me in the CBT, because it's you just have to have speed on boots um, and all that. So... Uh, the stats that I'm looking for are, uh, you can see that as attack, I just, I just wanted to demonstrate quickly, uh, the fleet of the ageless. What I would prefer to use though, if I had it memorized is, uh, the energy recharge, which yeah, right here. So energy recharge, uh, this is what I normally use on her. 
because I want her to gain her ultimate back as soon as possible. The idea that I'm increasing everyone's attack when I'm using the correct set uh, is awesome. However, I can increase everyone's attack more by having energy regain rate. The stats that I want to go for that I just got sidetracked completely is the energy re speed, energy recharge, uh, HP, or crit damage. She's not meant to be a tank. She's not meant to take off the focus. She's meant to go as fast as she can to build meter, to pop off her ultimate, to pop off her skill. I don't necessarily think you want to speed tune her so that she's behind a certain character. You you surely can, and I'm sure that would be effective. But I think the intent of the character is to lap as fast as you can. Out of all the sets, there is a speed set that you get from the beginning, but I think that the uh, using the ultimate and then advances you forward better suits her needs. Speed boots, like I said, crit damage is, can be an off one. Crit rate is really unnecessary in every way. She gets 100% crit rate, and none of her abilities affect her crit rate. In terms of C6-ing, C1, C2, or I guess in these ones, it's E1. Uh, I only genuinely think that the uh, E1 is cool because it allows 50% chance to recover a skill point. Um, so you could use your buff to bring someone forward, but you don't want to get... Yeah, this is a 50-50 gamble. Uh, and then... Um, take it by surprise after an ally uses their basic attack uh, with an win weakness at an opponent, Branya will immediately follow up dealing 80% of Branya's basic attack. Going down that, that line, it's not going to build you any skill meter, but going down that line of maybe there's an opportunity for her to be somewhat of a damage build instead of strictly a support build. Uh, and then if you really want to go all the way to C6, you're going to be looking at extending Branya's skills by one. I don't think that's worth it. Not a character that you ever want to roll like multiple for. So I think C0 is good enough uh, for this character. Um, yeah, I have enjoyed using Branya uh, since I've gotten her. She has been thus replaced in the CBT since I uh, unlocked Sela. However, using Branya and Sela to go through damage to be able to buff Sela, I've again seen the M the impact that Branya can bring into a team. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully it wasn't too aggravating and hopefully it too it wasn't too cringy. We'll make more content. Leave a like, leave a comment. Constructive criticism is always appreciated. You're valued and you are appreciated. And I literally have no idea what happens when I press this button. <laughs>